welcome uh, to this last session in tonight's uh, faculty conference before our panels. My name is Mary Mara, and I'm the director of City University of Seattle's Library and Learning Resource Center. I have a master's in library and information science from the University of Washington's Information School, and I've worked in CityU's library for nearly 15 years. My team has a strong history of collaborating with faculty to support student learning. Most recently, we've been actively involved with CityU's e-learning team and course managers on the development of exemplary online courses at CityU. The focus of today's presentation is this. How can faculty help to increase students' critical consumption of information? As we move through today's presentation, I'll provide a brief overview of CityU's approach to ensuring our graduates are information literate. I'll lead you through a comparison of the ACRL information literacy standards versus the updated information literacy framework. And ACRL, by the way, is the Association of College and Research Libraries and is a division of the American Library Association. And then last but not least, I'll share a few examples of the ways in which this framework is being used to support student learning and critical consumption of information in EAD 505, which is CityU's online course on adult learning theories and research in the Masters of Education in Adult Education. As we progress through the session, keep these questions in mind. What types of information do students or graduates in your field need to know how to access, evaluate, and apply in order to solve problems and to be effective in the workplace? And then how do your students go about developing these skills? Around 2004, CityU adopted an information literacy learning goal for all students that states our graduates will be able to find, access, evaluate, and use information to solve problems. From the beginning, academic and library leaders collaborated to develop and implement the program. The work involved a major paradigm shift from one-shot orientations and bibliographic sessions, thinly tied to required assignments, to an integrated program at students' point of need. Over time, the program evolved into three levels of student support. Level one includes contact information, for the program librarian in every Blackboard show. Level two adds to the contact information through tutorials or how-to guides that students may access on demand as they feel is needed. And level three includes required instruction developed collaboratively with course managers that may be led by the program librarian or an instructor who feels confident with the activities that have been designed and integrated into their particular course. CityU's program was founded in ACRL Standards for Information Literacy. And while the standards provided a good starting point for revising CityU's approach, in many ways they continue to emphasize skill development over the application of concepts in what is an increasingly complex information environment. On this slide, you can see one example of the skill-based focus of these standards. We continue to notice that students believe they already had developed the skills necessary to locate and evaluate information they needed, and that some faculty felt these skills should be acquired outside of coursework. The lack of quality information students use to support their work. In 2016, ACRL moved away from the standards and adopted the information literacy framework for higher education. The framework is based on a cluster of interconnected core concepts with flexible options for implementation, rather than on a set of standards or learning outcomes with a prescriptive list of skills to be developed. This change is reflected in the updated definition for information literacy that's listed here and that accompanies the framework. The framework is organized around six threshold concepts that you see listed here in alphabetical order. Each concept includes an introductory paragraph 
along with a list of knowledge practices or demonstrations of ways in which learners can increase their understanding. Each concept also includes a list of dispositions which describes the ways in which to address the affective, attitudinal, or valuing dimensions of learning. The framework really depends upon the idea that self-direction in a rapidly changing information environment is essential. One aspect of the framework that I particularly like is that the framework is relevant for research novices as well as experts. I've been working as a professional in the field of information science for 15 years, and there are still knowledge practices and dispositions which I personally feel I can continue to develop in. So EAD 505 is one of five courses designed to meet exemplary standards established by the School of Applied Leadership. It's a six-credit graduate course in the Master of Education in Adult Education program. And it's designed to provide a foundation for students in adult learning theory, as well as research skills and methods. It's one of the first classes students in this degree are expected to complete. The revised course was first taught without explicit integration of the framework in the spring of 2017. I noticed that the students really struggled with evaluating information sources. While they could repeat core concepts of what they should look for in a quality source, based on materials that I had provided uh, in the course, they were not effectively applying those concepts to the sources they selected for the weekly activities or for their written assignments. What this suggested to me was that while the students believed they knew what to do, and that we're trying to apply the basic skills outlined in the course tutorials, that the online information environment they were searching in was really more complex than they realized, and they were not able to effectively transfer their learning. So when it came time to teach the course in fall of 2017, one of the first changes we made was to explicitly integrate the ACRL framework, its knowledge practices, and its dispositions throughout the course. My intention was to help students recognize potential gaps in their learning by directly sharing all the details of the framework with them. I use a variety of strategies for doing this. To begin with, I draw attention to which framework is addressed each week by including it in the course schedule as a tip for the week. I also reference the relevant concept in weekly announcements that I use to introduce the week's outcomes and activities and in the, the wrap-up announcements, reminding students of key takeaways from the previous week's activities. So a little more directly, uh, I include weekly activities that require students to reflect on and apply the framework. These activities provide me with rich feedback for each student so that I can more accurately gauge the type of coaching and support they need to be successful in this class and in the program. At the same time, the activities are designed to prepare students for success as they complete the required coursework projects. Week one's required resources introduce students to challenges college students face when locating information for projects as well as to Kulthau's information seeking model, which includes an effective uh, dimension. The required resources also include skill-based tutorials on how to use the library's tools and how to format in-text citations and references with APA style. For the week's discussion board, each student locates two articles on a topic of interest to them found through one of our City U library databases. This activity is designed to provide them with hands-on practice using library tools. It also helps me understand their area of interest in adult education more fully and provides their first practice in APA uh, formatting. Each student is also assigned one threshold concept from the ACRL framework and must select one knowledge practice and one disposition that they wish to improve upon during the quarter. They then reply to at least two of their classmates who are assigned different concepts and this encourages the students to engage with three of these concepts in more depth.
Students really responded with enthusiasm and engagement to the review of the framework. <laughs> Despite the fact that I forgot to assign them a specific concept to begin their discussion board activity. I was interested to see that the uh, concepts they chose actually were spread pretty evenly um, across all six that are listed here. This slide actually shows you the concepts they identified as the ones that they wanted to develop further throughout the course. So you can see that authority is constructed and contextual, and searching as strategic exploration were the most frequently selected concepts. And so now uh, we're going to use a collaborate poll it's your turn to identify a knowledge practice and a disposition from the framework that you would like to develop further. So I've picked one of the concepts that the students identified as an area of interest to share with you today. Uh, so take a moment or two to read through these knowledge practices for searching as strategic uh, exploration. We'll bring up the polling tool after uh, just a moment so you've had a chance to read these. And then uh, I'll ask you to select uh, the number representing the one that you'd like to learn more about. So go ahead and take a moment to read these. Okay, so we're bringing up the poll now, and um, go ahead and make your selection. Okay, so go ahead and um, click on one of the numbers, one through five, to show the knowledge practice that you think you might like to learn a little bit more about or to develop further. Oh, you want to go ahead and close that out and we'll... Okay. Great. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to give you a minute here to read through. These are uh, the dispositions related to searching a strategic exploration. So same thing. Read through here and um, decide which one of these uh, you feel like you could develop further or uh, do a little bit more work around. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and make your selection, one through five. Were there any of the dispositions here that you're interested in um, in developing more? Any answers? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show those. Okay, great. Thank you for participating in these polls. Um, if you'd like to chat about ways that you or your students could develop these concepts further, feel free to reach out to me or to the librarian listed in your City of Blackboard course under faculty information. My contact information is listed at the end of this presentation. So I have a few more examples of ways in which the framework is integrated throughout this course that I wanted to share with you. Week two's activities focus on the concepts of research as inquiry and scholarship as conversation. They're designed to push the students a bit further in developing their skills, identifying topics, and locating relevant information, and also to prepare them for the assignment due in week three. 
They receive detailed feedback from the instructor on the draft topic they select, including tips on where to locate relevant information through the library's online collection. While this course is all about adult education, the settings in which students wish to apply their knowledge vary widely. I've had students in both sections tell me that there's no information on their topic, whether that be working with English language learning adults, incarcerated adults, or coaching adults on college and career options. In these cases, I've been able to direct the students to a body of research from within uh, the TESOL, criminal justice, or counseling disciplines, where they found a rich body of knowledge to inform their learning and their coursework. The wiki activity for week two is designed to draw out patterns for the students. Patterns of who the experts are that are writing about adult education. Patterns of where those experts are publishing their work. And at the same time, provide them with their second practice writing a summary of a research article and formatting uh, in-text citations and references using APA style. The wiki is also a takeaway item from this course that students can return to for foundational readings about the characteristics, roles, and goals of adult learners. Okay, so just as the activities from week one and two led to the assignment due in week three, the activities for weeks four and five help students develop the skills they need to complete a literature review that's due in week six. Framework concepts that are addressed include information creation as a process, research as inquiry, and scholarship as conversation. Through the week four activity, I continue to assess whether or not the students are successfully locating the type of peer-reviewed articles that provide a rich source of information for their literature reviews. If they're continuing to struggle, they receive more coaching and feedback. The first discussion board activity for week five introduces a concrete example of the concept of scholarship as conversation. The online debate format where students take a position as to whether andragogy is a standalone theory or whether it falls within pedagogy is intended to highlight that even as students, they can be scholars engaged in the conversations taking place within their discipline. The second activity in week five provides practice identifying themes across research articles that may help them organize their literature review. Students summarize one to two themes for their peers. They also turn in a research matrix and receive feedback and coaching on their work prior to completing the literature review due in week six. So I just want to leave you with um, these two thoughts. Uh, I believe that the best learning is really grounded in the best resources, and that learning how to connect to information is fundamental, maybe even critical to good academic and also professional work. Our librarians help students connect to good information more quickly than they might do on their own. And then uh, that the best schools really know what their students' needs are and are focused on meeting those needs. And in the library, my team is really focused on our students' information needs and finding ways to meet them in collaboration with faculty. Uh, are there any questions? Go ahead and show you my contact information and uh, a link to the framework. And um, so this will be visible in the recording for this session. The sessions are being uh, recorded. And uh, check out the framework. There's a lot of information in, in the document. Uh, what I shared with you tonight is really just a small part. That's just a small part. Okay. Oh. Um, but I do have a question. Yeah. So um, you talked about how students are often like, I can't find anything, I can't find anything. Um, are they able to see how the framework dispositions connect to 
into their needing to learn more about the body of knowledge that they're interested in? Um, Jenny wanted to know if you could repeat the question, then you'll get to type yeah. it in. Yeah, so um, the question was uh, when the students are struggling to find the information that they need, are they connecting um, the framework with that struggle? Mm -hmm. um, and I, they are uh, in terms of um, just recognizing that actually that's part of the process. And I think that was one of the biggest ahas for some of my students who were newer to um, academic research at this master's level. I had students in, my, in the course fall quarter who um, one of them had already completed a different master's program and was here just to get her adult ed program and was really well versed in research. But I also had a student who was coming in from the construction industry who'd been out of school for 15 or 18 years and he felt quite lost. So seeing the framework and that there's this affective dimension of feeling uncertain and not knowing what it is that you're looking for and being afraid that you're never going to find it is really important. That's one of the reasons I also have them read the uh, information seeking model that Carol Kolthow has put out because it talks about that struggle right before we have an aha moment. Um, the other thing is that just built into the framework is this idea that when you get stuck, reach out to somebody, whether it's your instructor or a librarian, and get help. And um, you know, so often when students approach us, to ask for help, the first thing they say is, I'm so sorry, I don't want to bother you. And they're afraid that their question is going to sound stupid. And um, I just laugh with them and say, you know, please, we get paid to be bothered. <laughs> and so we're really a resource for all of the students here at City U and um, would encourage them to reach out to us. So I think the framework did help with all of that. Are there any other questions? We have just a, a couple more minutes before the break, but yeah, go ahead. Um, we're going to upload a survey for you to fill out. I'll let you explain that. Okay, so I just put the uh, link in the chat box. If you could all, um, following this presentation, just fill out the survey, uh, it would really help us know what you know what in the uh, conference went well, what didn't, and what we can improve on next time. So we really appreciate your feedback. Um, thank you for attending, and please return for the panel discussion, because Mary and the rest of our presenters have a lot more to say and discuss, and we'd love <laughs> to see you there. <laughs>